Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's National Geographic Explorer Classroom, or I should say National Geographic. This one's exploring by the seat of your pants. But uh, my name is Joe Grabowski, and I'll be your host for today. And very excited. This week, we're celebrating sharks. So it's a whole shark week in partnership with an amazing organization called Sharks for Kids. And we're very excited to be joining uh, in for a zebra shark hangout with Ripley's Aquarium of Canada in Toronto, Ontario. So we have Patrick, who's going to tell us a little bit about what we're seeing right now. And then down there in the pool with the zebra sharks is Hannah. So Patrick and Hannah, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you very much for joining me and Hannah with these beautiful animals that you see right here. So Hannah is the aquarist in the pool right now, and she has this little bucket of food. And it has some squid, it has some bonito and some mahi-mahi, some very tasty treats for them. Squid is absolutely one of their favorites. You'll see that they're very eager to actually come over to Hannah and getting a bite to eat. And Hannah is essentially hand feeding them. So this is a form of training that we are putting them through. And it's a great way to get us to get the sharks actually to get very comfortable with our aquarist here at the aquarium. And it's also a great opportunity for us to take a really close look at them. So if we need to check up on them, make sure that they're nice and healthy. Also, if we need to run any tests on them, like drawing blood, uh, for doing blood tests or anything like that, this makes it a lot easier. As you can see, they are very comfortable with Hannah. They have no problem coming near her and actually getting a bite to eat from her. And Hannah is even able to kind of manipulate them a little bit and handle them, stroke them gently and they will just let her do so. You'll see some other little sharks in here that are gonna get fed after, but we're gonna be focusing on the zebra sharks. Now we call them zebra sharks, even though that they're all spotted, you see that it's kind of a funny name for you think maybe a leopard shark, but they're called zebra sharks because when they're younger, they actually are covered in stripes that looks very similar to the stripes on a zebra. Now those stripes actually help it blend into their environment and helps them hide in very small crevices. But as they get older, the stripes start to fade and then they will get the spotter pattern and the spotter pattern helps them hide more, uh, a lot more easily out in the open. But they will still like to come out and uh, out and about, but they also still like hiding in the larger caves and crevices and between the corals uh, in the coral reef homes where they are found. You can find this species in the Indo-Pacific. So that means around Southeast Asia, around uh, southern part of China and the Philippines. <laughs> they're, being, oh, they're being active today. <laughs> and uh, also in Australia. Now, these guys in the wild will mostly eat shellfish. Their teeth aren't actually used for ripping off anything. They're mostly used for crushing shellfish, things with hard shells like crabs, snails, uh, things like that. But they also will eat small fish because they do still have spiky parts in their teeth that are used to tear at small fish. So let's see if we can take a close look here get it on its back and so you can see its mouth and it's very oh <laughs> sometimes temperamental these ladies we have two females here we call them drew and biggie but you got to see a close look at them you can see how they have the mouth that is used for just sucking up the food into uh into it and then they will crush or tear their food accordingly depending on what they're eating. They also have these little barbels underneath their mouth, which are kind of like, uh, they're kind of like whiskers. But basically those whiskers are actually used for smelling and tasting the water. So they can find prey that's hidden very well, even if they can't see it because they are so good at smelling the water. Like other sharks too, they have another sense called electroreception, which means that they can sense the electricity from other living things in the water. That means that even though if they're swimming around and they don't see Hannah right away, they can still tell that she's in the water because they can sense the electricity coming from her heartbeat, which is pretty cool. And that's one way that they can also use to find their prey that's hidden in between the corals and the rocks in their homes. Now this species of shark, you can see that Hannah has no fear whatsoever. Most sharks are actually very cautious animals 
and have no interest in harming people whatsoever. Uh, zebra sharks, because they're a bit bigger, sometimes in the wild they can get curious and they'll come close to people, but they're generally quite friendly. Most of the time when people get bitten by a shark, which, again, because of their teeth, not quite as serious as if you were bitten by a great white, for instance. Uh, it could be a little painful, but most of the time when people get bitten by these guys, it's because they were doing something to the shark that they shouldn't have been doing in the first place. Uh, like, uh, for instance, riding the shark or pulling at its tail. It's stuff that is very really uncomfortable, and the shark might retaliate with a little nibble. But uh, Hannah doesn't have anything to fear from these ladies. They are very used to her and very comfortable being around people. You may notice sometimes when they come around that they have very small eyes. So that, remember how I mentioned those other senses that they use to find their prey. Those small eyes, they do work, but they're not very good, not compared to other species of shark that depend a lot more on sight. But they also have these tiny holes near their head that you might see that actually are called spiracles. This is a species of shark that is able to stay still and still breathe. Some sharks need to always swim to breathe, but these ones, because of these spiracles near their eyes, kind of hard to spot there. They're like little holes just behind their eyes. They are able to suck water in and then force it out through their gills so they can still breathe while staying perfectly still. So sometimes you'll see them resting. Actually, usually zebra sharks are nocturnal, so you see them more active at night. But these ones, they actually stay pretty active a lot of the time. They like swimming around in circles and exploring their environment. Very curious creatures. And they can make very sharp turns, even though they're very long animals uh, and their tails are quite majestic and beautiful, they still can make very sharp turns. They are very bendy, very flexible. And that's very helpful because when they live in coral reefs and rocky reefs, you have to be able to make very sharp turns uh, to get in between all of the all the stuff in your home. Also very good for getting away from predators. They do have some predators in the wild. There are some species of shark that are much larger than them. And those sharks can potentially pose a threat uh, if they get caught. So they need to be good at uh, trying to escape by trying to squeeze through places other sharks can't. Now these sharks, as, even though they are quite beautiful, unfortunately, they're starting to disappear all over the world and they're starting to become endangered in several places that are actually critically endangered. And that's because a lot of people are hunting and fishing these sharks uh, and using their meat for food and also for making certain kinds of vitamins using shark oils uh, from their liver. They will actually hunt these sharks, these beautiful animals, and they are hunted to such an extent in an unsustainable way, meaning that too many of them are being taken and not enough are being left to replenish their population. A lot of them are also in danger of habitat loss. Many coral reefs are being destroyed right now because of bottom trawling, fishing nets that drag along the bottom and destroy coral reefs, and also due to coral bleaching. So coral reefs being destroyed because of climate change. So they're starting to run out of homes as well. Thankfully, there's stuff that we can do to help, just general things that we can do at home to try and cut back on climate change, uh, like uh, you know, turning off the lights when you're not in a room, or by instead of getting a plastic water bottle, having a reusable bottle you can fill out as many times as you want. Those things can help make a difference for our oceans, for these beautiful sharks, and for the world in general. And in fact, in Australia, because of new laws that they put in place to protect these animals, now they can't be hunted or fished, it's illegal to do so, their populations have started to come back. And that's a really good sign. It means that it's not too late for them all across the world. We can make a difference. It just, we just need to get people to actually care. So that's part of what we're doing here is getting you people, getting you young folks interested in these beautiful creatures and actually wanting to make a difference to make sure that they're around for generations to come. All right. Well, Patrick, thank you so much. I, uh, uh, and you have to say a big thank you to Hannah because she's doing an amazing job there with the zebra sharks. And you're always full of some great information for the classroom. So we really appreciate that. Oh, my pleasure. All right. Well, if you're up for it, you ready to meet some classrooms? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So let's jump to our first classroom. We'll start with one round uh, in each classroom, and then uh, we'll see how much time we have left. So let's go to Markham, Ontario first here in Canada, and we're going to visit a grade one class with Mrs. Bookley, and let me turn her microphone on. Your favorite how are you doing, grade ones? Hello. 
No, no, he said, how are you? How are you? No. <laughs> I'm good, thank you. <laughs> okay. Can you share a special fact with us? About zebra sharks. About zebra sharks? A special fact about zebra sharks. Uh, yes, I can share one with you. So, most sharks actually give birth to live young. That means that they give birth just like humans do, uh, just like our mommies, are, uh, our mommies do for us. They will give birth to live young. But this shark is actually an egg-laying species of shark. That means that they lay eggs, and their eggs actually kind of look like funny little uh, green little purses inside the water. They're called mermaid's purses. And we actually have some here. These are actually not for our zebra sharks. It's from another species of shark in here, but they look fairly similar, another kind of carpet shark. But see, you can see that. Yeah, so that is a mermaid's purse. Thank you, Hannah. So they can lay eggs like that. These ones here, though, are all female, so they probably won't be laying too many eggs, but they can still lay a few because they are still able to lay eggs even if they don't have a male to fertilize them. So that's a fun fact for you. All right, great ones. Thank you for that awesome request. Let's see. Let's jump now to a grade two classroom joining us in Lakota, North Dakota uh, with Mrs. Lindell. Let me turn their microphone on here for them. How are we doing, grade twos? Good. <laughs> What's... What are the zebra sharks predators? What are the sharks predators? So there are certain kinds of sharks like uh, tiger sharks and bull sharks. Those sharks are quite large. And uh, actually, you almost never find them in any aquarium in the world because they don't do very well in captivity. Not just because they need a lot of space, but because they like swimming around. They like being by themselves. So they don't actually do very well in aquariums. But on top of that, they eat a lot and they eat a lot of different things. And one of those things is including zebra sharks. And now a large zebra shark, a full-grown zebra shark like these two ladies, like Drew and Biggie here, might be a little bit more difficult, but they can still do it, but they prefer going after their young because it's a lot easier to catch and a lot easier to eat. All right. Thank you for your question. Great twos. Let's jump over now to Mrs. Bowen's group. Their grade threes joining us uh, in Ontario. Let me turn their microphone on here. Hi, grade threes. Hi. Hi. Where in Ontario are you guys? We're right here in Toronto. In Toronto, awesome. Oh, locals. Yes. <laughs> How can you tell them apart? How can you tell them apart? That is a good question. Uh, so Hannah, remind me, is it Drew that has the, the fin here? This is Drew. So Drew has this little notch on her right pectoral fin. The pectoral fins are the big fins on the side, the one that Hannah's handling right now. You see that little notch there? So that one is Drew. She also has a spot on her nose. Uh, so those are really little details that the Aquarius and myself can use to identify them. Uh, but on top of that, they also have different behaviors and moods. So Drew's, uh, you could see that Hannah had no problem handling her whatsoever. Uh, whereas Biggie, she's still, she's okay being touched, but she's still, sometimes she gets moody and sometimes she's not in the mood for being touched or, you know, she, she doesn't want to eat. She's not as hungry or she's, or she's more picky. Uh, she also swims around a lot more in different parts of the tank, whereas Drew likes to swim uh, in a counterclockwise near the top. So this is Biggie right here that Hannah has. Yeah, so that's how we can tell them apart. All right, another great question. And Patrick, you know your zebra sharks. <laughs> All right, who have we visited yet? Let's go to Mrs. Cross's grade fours. They're in Pemberville, Ohio in the United States. And let me turn their mic on. Hi. Morning, grade fours. Hi there. Where are these zebra, zebra sharks naturally from? Where are these zebra sharks from? Yeah, well, like naturally from. So pretty yeah, much naturally yeah. from. Where are these zebra sharks naturally from? 
So these zebra sharks, I believe, were caught in the wild, uh, but they were in another facility before they came here. I'm not exactly sure of the details. And uh, depending on some of our animals, we are we do have them born here, like a lot of these bamboo sharks. Uh, some of them have been born here, but some of them work on the wild and some of them come from other aquariums. Now, depending on where they came from and depending on the information that they gave us when we first received these animals, we might know a lot about where they're from and how they were caught and where they've been since then. But some places they have very limited details on where these animals were actually kept prior to being delivered to us. So sometimes we have to kind of guess. Um, so this is one of those ones where we're not exactly sure where they're from originally, but uh, I do believe that they were caught in the wild. There are some zebra sharks, however, that have been successfully bred in captivity in the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago. In 2004, they actually bred and uh, successfully uh, hatched many, many uh, zebra shark eggs. So if you see some zebra sharks in other aquariums, you might see some that were actually born in captivity. All right, let's jump to another classroom. We're gonna go to Austin. Uh, Texas this time with Mrs. Kerr's grade two classroom. Let me turn their mic on. Hey, Austin, how are you? We have a question from Caitlin. Um, do they live near the bottom of the ocean? So they do live near the bottom, but not in the very deep part of the ocean. Coral reefs and rocky reefs are actually very close to the beaches and the shores. Um, so even though they do stay near the bottom where it's nice and sandy or rocky or corally, uh, that's not very deep in the water because coral, it, it actually needs to be in the sunlight to be able to grow because of the algae that lives in them. So that means that even though they do live on the sand, it's not in the very deep part of the water. All right, jump to grade seven this time in Mississauga, Ontario, so not too far away. Uh, Mrs. Tugby's class at Hillside Public. Let me turn their microphone on. Actually, your microphone is just off my screen, so if you guys don't mind, turn it on for me uh, in the grade seven classroom. It's red. If you click it, it should turn white. Got it. All Morning. Right. Morning. How much? How much baby sharks weigh? How much How do much baby sharks, sharks weigh? weigh? Well, they actually haven't been weighed in a while, but they can actually weigh uh, anywhere from 65 to 90 pounds when they're full grown. Uh, but they actually don't weigh as much as you think. Even that 60, uh, 90 pounds or so isn't very heavy. And that's because even though it's a very large animal, sharks, their skeletons are not made out of bone. It's mostly made out of cartilage. And cartilage is the same stuff that makes our noses and our ears. Uh, so it's a lot more flexible and it's a lot lighter. Uh, but the last time these ladies were weighed was a while back. So we're not exactly sure how much these ones weigh right now. But they are full grown and they are quite big. So it's probably around that uh, 80 to 90 pound range. All right, great sevens. Thank you for that great question. So Patrick, I'm wondering, we still have a few more minutes. So we will visit a couple more classrooms, but I'm wondering, um, if you and Hannah could maybe take a moment and tell us a little bit about how you came to be working at the aquarium. What was your, your career path or your, what led you to the aquarium? Yeah, absolutely. So my background is in evolution and evolutionary biology. Um, that's what I studied in school and I went to graduate school and my master's here in Toronto. Uh, but I, I kind of discovered that even though I, academia is very interesting that I had much more of an interest in what I'm doing right now with you guys, which is talking to people and teaching people about how awesome science and nature and environmentalism is. Uh, so I decided to apply here at the aquarium and here I am now I'm an educator and I get to teach people from all around the world and it's great. Uh, Hannah here is an aquarist. Uh, Hannah, what's your education background? What did, what did you do for school? Oh, great. So she went to Halifax here in Canada. 
Uh, I'm an East Coaster myself, Hannah. I don't know if you knew that about me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so did marine biology and oceanography there. And how'd you end up here at the How'd you end up here at the aquarium? Oh, awesome. So yeah, so she worked in aquaculture, which is raising fish in captivity for the purposes of eating. But now she raises fish for the purposes of just having them around and taking good care of them. And she's great at it. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, let's, uh, we can probably maybe steal two, maybe three more questions from the classroom. So um, if a classroom wants to give me a wave, I'll know to come back to your classroom and we'll hit uh, if you guys have another classroom. There we go. Mrs. Kerr's class is waving. So let me turn their microphone on in Austin. Um, how many are left in the wild? Uh, it's hard to say. A few thousand, for sure. But it's hard to say the exact number. But we do know that based on numbers in the past, that it has gone down significantly. But the exact number, I'm not sure. All right. And I saw our... Our grade ones in Markham giving me a nice big wave. Let's see if they have another question. Hey, Riley, come on up. Okay. okay, ready? How long can they live in the aquarium? How long can they live in the aquarium? Well, they can actually live about 25, 30 years, maybe even a little bit more. Um, we're hoping, we're, we're not entirely sure the age of these ladies here, uh, probably in their teens, in their mid-teens. Uh, is what we've kind of estimated. Like I said, we don't know the entire details about their upbringing, but we're guessing in their mid-teens, but we're hoping that they will be able to stick around for at least another uh, 10, 15 years. Uh, yeah, because they, they can in the wild live 25 to 30 years and around that same amount in captivity as well. All right, let's see another way from a classroom. Mrs. Cross's classroom, let me turn your microphone on. How long is the longest zebra shark that you have at the aquarium? How long is our longest zebra shark at the aquarium? Uh, gosh, she's about eight feet, I think. They're both around the same size. They're very, very close in size, but it's around eight feet. Uh, but those aren't the biggest sharks at our aquarium, though. Our biggest sharks are our sand tiger sharks, which you will not see in this tank here. Uh, they need a lot more room to swim around. That's in our dangerous lagoon tank. And the sand tiger sharks, close relatives of the great white, but unlike the great white that doesn't like being in captivity, sand tigers do very well here, and they can get pretty big. About uh, definitely 10, 11 feet for sure. All right, Mrs. Bowen's class, I think I saw a hand in there. Dead things. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? A bit closer to the mic, please. Could the zebra sharks sense dead things? How do zebra sharks sense dead things? Uh, I think well, they can use their, their sense of smell and taste, and they can actually do that in the wild very, very well. So it's not but with their eyes. Again, it's usually using their sense of smell and taste. And a lot of those senses are those little whiskers that you see on them. Those, uh, they're called barbels. They look like whiskers. So zebra sharks wouldn't be opposed to scavenging from time to time? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, all sharks are opportunistic. So that means opportunistic means that whatever is easiest to get. So if they find some dead animals at the bottom of the ocean and they can get a bite to eat for sure they would be able to grab some and the fish that we feed that we don't feed the live fish here and they have no problem with that still very fresh though perfect mrs lindell's classroom there's so many people waving there we better stop in how fast can the zebra shark swim how fast can the zebra shark swim um i'm not entirely sure they're not one of our. They're not one of the fastest sharks. Again, they are. They prefer actually making sharp turns over actual speed. Uh, 
but the full speed, I'm not positive. Probably around 20 kilometers an hour, maybe more, but not much faster than that, I wouldn't say. All right, and since our lightning round of questions went so quickly, we can visit our last classroom, uh, our grade sevens. If you don't mind turning the mic on for me one more time, I can see some waving, a little dancing. Let's get a question in. And then hit the corner. Okay, yeah. okay go ahead, Sweet Pea. Okay, um, do they live longer if they're in like the wild or in the aquarium, or is it the same like amount of time? It's relatively the same. There are some animals that do live longer in captivity, and there are actually, unfortunately, some animals that live shorter lifespans in captivity. Uh, zebra sharks, generally, it's around the same. There's some variation, but very, very little. So these ones, hopefully, will be able to live here a nice long time, just like they would in the wild. And even better than the wild, they get lots and lots more food, and they also don't have to worry about predators. All right, very good. An awesome way to spend Shark Week is spending a little time with some sharks. So uh, Patrick and Hannah, I can't thank you guys enough for taking a little time out of your morning to hang out with these classrooms in different spots all around North America. Oh, it was my pleasure. And Hannah, what, did you have fun today? <laughs> <laughs> she likes playing with the sharks as much as we like watching them. <laughs> Excellent. Well, the last thing I'll do before we sign off for today is I'll turn all the classroom's microphones on and they can get nice and loud and say goodbye and thank you. And just maybe the zebra sharks might hear it down there as well. So here we go. Nice and loud. All right. Good job, boys and girls. You're very good at that, as always. Thank you so much to Ripley's Aquarium of Canada in Toronto. Um, you guys are the best, and we look forward to our next hangout. Thanks, everyone. My pleasure. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.